Welcome to another impromptu episode of Raven's Messy Nest, where I unceremoniously shove stuff out of the way. Because I just can't wait to show you something cool. If I can find my focus spot here. There we go. Uh, some weeks back on, somewhere on YouTube, I saw somebody messing around with this quick steel extreme. It's a metal compound used to make high temperature repairs and it takes really high temperature. And uh, I just thought I'd play with it and try it out. I ordered it and I was busy when it came so it was a few weeks and I kind of forgot about it until today I ran across this little rubber mold here and I said oh that's what I was going to do I was going to play with that metal stuff so the instructions say to oh it's gritty it's very separated it feels like like metal grit and I don't know how much stirring it's going to take to make goo well, it seems to be absorbing fairly quickly. So, I may have to cut out a few seconds of this. Oh, it looks, it's sparkly. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but it really shows um, metallic flex. It's quite pretty. Okay, it's mixing up pretty fast. I'm not sure how thick it's supposed to end up. I've never messed around with it before. It's getting thicker, thicker, thicker. I hope it keeps well because I won't be using very much of it at one time. I see it's a little coarse, so I was going to use this little mold with the bird, tree branches, and leaves, but I think this goop might be a little too coarse for that. Oh. I think it's mixed about as much as it's going to mix. It's fairly stiff, like a little thicker than brownie batter, more of a cookie batter, I guess. You notice I speak in terms of food. Now, it's not quite as clay-like as I was expecting, so I'm not really that sure how to handle it. Uh, what do I try here? Maybe it'll self-level and settle into the mold. This is a silicone mold, so I expect it will release the form fairly well. Whether it releases it with good detail or not. Yet to be seen. I don't want it to be too thick because I don't want my metal to be that thick. Oh, uh, let's see what do I do here. I'll try this little bird too, I think. Get it off and there's a little beak there that might be hard to get. I was going to try to use this mold and freeze and fuse too, but I think it's just a little bit too delicate. There's some, a lot of little fine parts there that probably... Oh, well, this is settling in quite nicely. You know, I think I'll do the owl as long as I'm... Seems how it's settling into the mold quite well, even if I don't use the owl for fusing into glass, because it might be a little bit too much mass. But even if I don't use it for that, I might use it for something else. Come on. I'm not sure how deep this particular one is a little bit deeper than the 
little birds. I want to get enough to get the detail, but not so much as to overdo it. Okay. Now I'm going to put the lid on tightly and hope this stuff keeps quite well. It's made by Blue Magic. I got it. I don't remember if I got it from eBay or Amazon, one of the two. But I didn't have any hard I didn't have a hard time finding it, so it's readily available. Oops, now I got a little excuse me. <laughs> I think I just burped in the in the microphone. Uh okay, that's yeah, got a couple little bumps. I'm going to put it under the lamp to set and I'll be back later and see how they come out of the mold. Okay, back again a few hours later. The mold with the metal compound has been sitting under a heat lamp and well, just a desk lamp for a while, and then time to pop them out and see how they look. They look pretty neat. So far, so good. The owl. They picked up nice detail. They feel pretty sturdy. They even picked up the tiny little beak that I worried about. Just a little bit of overfill on some of these edges a little rough but it pops right off which makes me think these are probably a little bit fragile but I'm not going to try to break one and see so as I said before this compound uh, I forget how high the temperature reading is on it but it's within fusing temperatures. I have to find the paper. I've had it for so long now that I misplaced the cardboard that came with it. Unless... Okay, it cold welds and holds up to 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's very tiny print. I don't know if you can see it or not. I can barely see it because I didn't put any reading glasses on. So next we will try to stick it on some glass and see what happens. I'm sure there's a real good chance of a, an issue because of course the COE isn't going to match the glass. But it will hold up to the temperature, so I'm just curious. We'll see what happens. Okay, so here I have just a couple little squares of glass. I decided I'd put it on a, a stack of two, just so I could uh, fuse it enough to go into a full tack fuse, but or maybe contour, but still kind of hold the hold the shape that I got there just oops, I guess I could have been a little bit more generous with the size but anyway that's what it looks like going in and we'll see what it looks like coming out pretty soon okay back with some final results uh, I don't know if you can see there is definitely some cracking in the one I did on the blue. I, the glass was seemed a little too small so I did add a third layer. I just put a little piece of glass on the bottom. And this little guy here, I just did him in a, a couple pieces of scrap stained glass. And the owl I stuck into a piece of uh, 
think it was kind of clear, but I put mica. I fired it on a bed of brushed on mica, and I brushed mica on the steel charms too. And it did retain a little bit of the mica, but not that well. Enough to give it a little bit of a texture. They have a very rough, uh, primitive artifact. Look, let's all call them artifacts. <laughs> the clear and the stained glass isn't showing any fractures or cracks. The clear, actually, now that I'm looking at it closer, I do see a stress fracture in the clear off to the side here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, this one is very prominent. There are probably ways I could do it again and avoid some of that. I could go a lot slower and cool a lot slower. I was just in a hurry to see some results here. Uh, but then again, they're just for my own use. Because of the crack factor, I wouldn't put them in anything to sell or give away anything. But, you know, I just have to play and experiment. So the liquid steel, I think if you went with uh, smaller forms, thinner shapes, it would probably behave a little bit better. Uh, I had a thought and I lost it. <laughs> but it does hold up to the the firing quite well. Also, as you can see, I took these ah, pretty much to full fuse. If I was to stop at tack fuse, the cracking might be minimized as well. So anyway, it's something to play with, and uh, like we all need one more toy, right? Oh, I was going to show again at the end here. The product is Blue Magic Extreme Quick Steel. It has to be the extreme, because the regular doesn't have the high temperature rating. So it has to be the Blue Magic Extreme. But there is definitely potential to play with. Till next time, good night.